What'd you do? What'd you do? Add 3x, good. So we're going to add 3x to both sides. And what else? Say it again. Subtract. Well, no, do something good. Okay. Probably what I would have expected you to do at this point would have been to subtract 16. And, and let's look at why. You'll tell me why in a second. So then that means on the right side, everything would cancel, and I get a 0, right? On the left side, we're going to get x squared minus 6x minus 15, right? OK, so what are our options here? Because now it's time for us. You've, you've had a lot of practice doing individual skills, and now is when they kind of all come together right? at the end of the chapter. So let's think about the stuff that we are able to do. We've only solved two kinds of quadratic equations at this point. We've solved quadratic equations, let's leave this for a second, that look like this. Like, for example, if I gave you even a, like a little harder one, like x plus 3 squared minus 2 equals 9, how would we solve that one? We don't have to do it right now, but how would we solve that one? What's our strategy going to be? Add two. Say it again. Add two. Add two. OK, and what is it that you're trying to do? You're exactly right. That would be the first individual step. But what's our process here? What are we trying to do? PEMDAS backwards. Good, because very good, because we can point to a single x. And so we can just work backwards through PEMDAS and isolate. And that's always going to be a fairly easy thing to do, right? We've had, a, if you're not super far behind, you've had a fair amount of practice with that. That's what we did in 3.1, right? 3.1, there's a lot of, we did a lot of assignments where you worked backwards and solved for x by eventually square rooting both sides, right? And then finishing the process. So that we can do. Those are all, that's all stuff that, you can do or you will be able to do shortly, like over the weekend when you catch up on missing homework, if you're missing some. So that's something that's not a big deal. Uh, the other thing that we've, that we've done is stuff that looked like this, where we couldn't isolate an x because I had two different x terms, an x squared term and an x term. And what was our strategy there? What did we do? Yeah, this was a little different. Was, yeah, didn't, didn't we, did, is this the one where we did the parentheses? Yes, it is. Exactly. This is the one where we factor, right? So we're going to try to break this up into a product of factors, and all we had to do was find the magic numbers. In this case, what would the magic numbers have to do? Multiply to what? To negative 15 and add to negative 6. Negative 6. Okay, so find those. 3. Hurry up and find those for me. Quick, quick. 3 and 5. What? You having a hard time? You might be. Oh, nothing goes for Yeah, it's not going to work, is it? There aren't any. It's not going to work. Yeah, there's, there's no, there aren't any two numbers, two whole numbers or integers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 6, right? So it's, you could try, but you're not going to find anything. And you could establish that pretty quickly. There are only, how many factors are there of 15? 15 and 1 or 2? 5 and 3. 5 and 3. So there's only a couple things to try, and none of those work, do they? Right? So this is one that is not going to work the way we currently would have to do this one. So at this point, we're stuck. So starting today, we're going to look at today one and Monday a second way of, of solving these kind, the leftovers, the stuff that we can't do yet. Everything that we can do at this point, we should do it the way we've been taught. Right? If you can factor it easily, that's the easiest and most foolproof way of solving a quadratic equation. If you can isolate x, well, do that. That's easy. But stuff like this, this is where we need something different. Right? So we're going we're gonna to come up with a new strategy. And it turns out that the strategy that we're going to use today, we're going to come up with a strategy that's going to allow us to turn this kind of problem into one that looks like that or we can isolate an x. So we can start with a problem where there are x squareds and x's, 
and through a process called completing the square, we can turn that into a kind of quadratic equation that we can solve by isolating x. Okay? So we don't put those parentheses? No, that's not going to work for us this time. That, if, if we could find magic numbers that did those things, we would, because that would be the easiest solution. But we can't this time. It won't work. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, I want to introduce you to something first. We're going to, we're going to look for a pattern here. Uh, I want to introduce you to a couple uh, new terms, defini definitions, right? some vocabulary. A perfect square trinomial. Now, a perfect square trinomial is what we get when we expand what looks like just two factors that are the same thing. So if I take something like x plus 3 or x minus 5, if it's in the form x plus a number, whether it's positive or negative, and I expand that out, if I square it, when I expand that out, I want you to watch what happens. Let's see if you can look for a pattern here. So let's, let's go ahead and do the, the top one first. If I, if I rewrite this as a product of x plus 3 times x plus 3, what do I get if I take the x, the first x, and I distribute it over the second factor? What do I get? So the first one is x squared. X squared. What's the next term going to be, Bailey? 3x. 3 3x, 3 good. Now we're going to take the 3 from the first factor and distribute it to the second. Danny, what's the first thing we're going to get? 3x. 3x, good. And what's the last thing going to be, Valerie? Three times three? Oh. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay, so we got that. If I combine like terms now, look what we get. So I could take, there's only one x squared term and one nine term, but I've got three x plus three x, and how many x's is that? Six. Six x. Okay, good. So then we end up with x squared plus <laughs> six x plus. Nine. Okay. So there's there's one example. Now let's look at another one, and it takes maybe two to get the see if you can get the pattern. So let's do this one. Let's do x minus five squared. And we'll just multiply it out just like before. Okay, everybody, what's going to be the first term? Next term. Five x. Minus five x. Good. Next term. Minus five x. Good. Next term. Uh, 25. 25. Good. Plus 25. Good. So we end up with, if we combine, once again, if we combine the like terms, I get x squared. Good. Minus 10x plus. I don't know how we got the 9 on the last one. Oh, 25. 25. There you go. <coughs> Okay, so, so here's my question. Here's my question then. I want to know, uh, can you find a way to, because the only thing that's changing in all of these examples we're looking at, I only did two, but we could do a lot more if we had time. The only thing that's changing is the number that's being added to x, right? So I want you to see if you can find a connection. Can you connect positive 3 to 6? And nine in the same way that you're going to connect negative five. Yes. To negative ten and twenty-five. Yes. Or factors. Sure. Kind of. I, I'm here. Okay. Somebody. How, how do we get the six and the ten and the negative ten? Oh. Multiply two. by two. By two. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And multiply by itself. Then we square it. Good. Which is squaring. It. Perfect. Okay. So we, we found out what the what the pattern is, right? So when we start off with something like this, we know that when we write this as a perfect square trinomial, so when we write it as an x squared term plus an x term plus a constant, the coefficient of x is always going to be 2 times the number, and the constant is going to be the square of the number, right? So what if we, what if we take an example like this where we're just going to take x plus n squared, where n is just any number, right? I'm going to specify. It could be any number, right? What are we going to get? x to the second power to the plate, m2. Plus. Oh. Ah, good. Plus. Wait, oops. Two and two plus. Two, two n, n times x. I'm doing this wrong. Plus n squared. n squared. Good. Okay. Now, what would happen? I, I just want you to see something here. 
what would happen if we went backwards? So what if we started with this one, for example? Let's take the <coughs> x squared minus 10x plus 25. I just want you to see that what we've done here is we have effectively done the opposite of factoring is all, right? So if we started with x squared minus 10x plus 25, and we wanted to write that, well, we'll do it this way. If we wanted to write that in factored form, where those were both x's, what would our magic numbers be that would multiply to 25, positive 25, and add to negative five 10? And five. Negative 5 and negative 5, right? Yeah. Right? Did everybody see? Okay, so that's all we did, right? No big deal. Right. Okay, but now that we know what the pattern is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that pattern so we can use it on the next page. That would be helpful. Okay, so what could we do then if we had a problem like this? Let's say that we had, we wanted to solve the equation. Actually, we'll do something different. I want you to fill something in for me. Uh, we just did 10. So are we still doing putting the square over? Yeah. Okay, I want to know if I start off with those first two numbers, what number would I have to add here so that this would be a perfect square trinomial that factors into just x plus a number squared? <coughs> yeah, what's it going to be? 49. How'd you get it? 7 squared. 7 squared, aha. Because the pattern that we wanted to use here, remember, was there's our pattern, right? So if we flip that around, we know that whatever's there in that term has to be, that whatever's there has to be twice as big as the number that ends up being there, doesn't it? Right? Everybody agree? Everybody agree? So you put seven there. I would put seven there first, exactly. And then if that's a seven, then what would the other part of this have to be? The constant would have to be whatever that number is, which is seven squared, or 49. You see it? OK. So try that again. I want you to tell me now what number. I want you to fill in. Nobody say anything out loud. Try this on your own. I want you to fill in these blanks for me. Say anything out loud. Everybody, whoops. Everybody just try that, please. Try that. Fill in the, the green and the red boxes. So it'd almost be more convenient for us to maybe turn that thing around, wouldn't it? Right? Because we're does that make sense? So we've got the this part on the other side, right? Okay, what do you think? What's gonna go <coughs> there? It's ten. ten. How come? Because it's half of that, isn't it? Right? Oh, that's supposed to. Whoops, that's supposed to be an X. I forgot an X. Uh, we knew what you meant. You knew what I meant. Yeah. So, because it's half of the coefficient of X, right? So half of that is ten, which means what goes there? Five. No. Ten. A hundred. Ten squared. Okay. And by adding one hundred there. 
we added just the right number to create a perfect square trinomial. Okay? Make sense? Okay, let's do another one. Uh, we could maybe make this, would, the part that's probably a little bit complicated here is that we're starting with, instead of starting here, we're actually starting here, aren't we? Right? Yeah. Like in the stuff that we did on the previous page, we always started with x plus some number squared and then we got an answer. But usually for us, when we're doing solving quadratic equations, we're starting here and getting to something like that, right? So let's flip this around and see if we can come up with a better way of doing this, a little easier formula, okay? So we, we're going to put this number on the left. So we get x squared plus 2nx plus n squared equals x plus n quantity squared. Well, we usually don't have two times a number there. It's just going to be a number, right? Like when we did this one here, we had a 20. It's difficult to think of that as being 2 in. It'd be easier just to call it something like b, right? So what if we start with something like x squared plus bx, right? And we want to know what could we add to this to create a perfect square trinomial, right? Well, whatever that number is, what's the formula going to be? This one is just going to be half of that, right? Everybody agree? Yeah. And this number right here is going to be whatever half of that is squared, right? So that's how we complete the square, right? I get confused when you add letters like that in there. I don't know why. Well, okay, the reason, now, and why do we do that? The reason we use, uh, what I always try to do is initially I try to, I try to use specific values to kind of give you an idea of what the process is. But then after a while, we want to generalize that and write it in terms of a variable or a parameter like this where we can change the value. It doesn't, we're not pinning it down to one example. It work for any number, right? So let's see if we can go back then to our original problem, and let's see if we can, if we can solve this thing by using this process. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The process of completing the square. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the 15 because the 15 doesn't match the negative 6 to create a perfect square trinomial, right? So step one is going to be... Oh, okay. Remind me with a little bit to go here. i got to hand these out. Somebody... Remind me, Valerie. You're organized. Remind me with five minutes to go. Around. <laughs> okay, so step number one, step number one, we're, we're going to write out a series of steps here, how we can apply what we just learned. Here's what we're starting with, right? So step one is we're going to write it as something like x squared plus bx equals c. I think I have it. Okay, so then that means that this first one here, what's that going to become? We're just going to push the 15 to the other side. Right? We're going to write it as x squared minus 6x equals positive 15. There's step one. Okay? Step two is going to be we're going to write out our template. Okay? So step two, we want to write it like this. We're going to write it as x squared minus 6x plus something equals 15 plus something. Now, those somethings have to be the same, right? Because I have an equation, and so I'm adding the same thing to both sides. But remember that the reason we're doing that is so what we get on this side is a perfect square trinomial, right? So really what we want to do is we want to know what is the number that's going to be in here? It's going to be 3, exactly, because we know that if this is b, so we're going to identify what's the value of b, B is negative 6, right? Everybody agree? If B is negative 6, then what's half of B? Negative 3. Negative three. Yeah. And what's half of B squared? 9. 9. Okay. So when we complete the square, we always know that the factor that we're going to get is going to be X plus half of B, which is just minus 3, squared, right? That's the goal. Everybody agree? And then on the other side of the equation, we're just going to get some, some number, right? 
We're just going to get some number. And why did we do that? Well, we did that because now we could solve this equation by isolating x, right? OK, but how are we going to know what the number is on the other side? The number on the other side is going to be 15 plus whatever we add to both sides to get this result, right? So what has to go there? Uh, nine. Nine, exactly. Because what goes there is going to be half of b squared. OK, I'm looking around here. And I'm seeing some people who I don't feel like are totally engaged up here. There's some other things going on. Not loud. It's not bothering me or probably anybody else. But if you're not watching this, I'm going to have not much sympathy if you can't do it. OK? I see 90% of the people really focused in and a few people that aren't. OK? So we know that what goes here is going to be half of b squared. I've got to do the same thing to both sides. Now, did we even really need to know? what it was here? Not really, because we knew that we were going to build x minus 3 squared on the left side. But we needed it because we needed to know what got added to 15. So 15 plus 9 is what? 24. So we end up with <coughs> this equation that we can easily solve. Two steps, right? Square root both sides and add 3, and we're done, right? You see how that works? So we turned this from an equation that we couldn't solve the other way, right, to one that we could solve by isolating x, right? What were the steps once again? Let's just go through the steps. We wrote it in the form x squared plus bx plus c, and we left a blank there, didn't we? We leave a blank there so we can add something to both sides, right? We know that when we do that, we're going to get x plus some number squared. But we've just got to fill in the blanks. And all of the numbers that we get are, are built by that b, aren't they? The number that's in front of x determines what goes there and what goes there in those two places. Right? What goes there? Well, half of b is what's going to be in our factor. And half of b squared is what we have to add to both sides to make that happen. Why don't you just multiply by 2? Say it again. Squared. Yeah. Okay. So let's try another one. Try this one. Oops. Is that the one we just did? No, it's a different one. Try that one. Try that one. Okay. First time through, I'm going to help you set up the template. Say it again. Plus bx equals c, right? So that's the first thing you got to do is you got to make it look like you got to start with x squared plus bx equals c, right? Okay, for us, for everybody, then I'll let you go on your own. What's that going to look like for us? x squared plus x plus x. Equals 15. Good. Okay. I want you to fill in all those boxes.
you get to there, I want to I want to kind of go around and make see how everybody's doing. So the next thing to do would just be to try to solve it. Try to isolate x. Once you complete the square, try to try to keep going and solve it. Very nice.
Okay, hey, that's pretty good. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Okay, so, okay, but look what you didn't do. You went, everything was almost right, but you didn't add 36 to the equation. If you add it on this side, you got to add it on that side, too. So that makes it okay. Yes, sir. I'm not sure how long I'm so that's the 15 plus 36 is 50. Okay, here we go. Have a quick look. I want, okay, I want your attention up here, please, right now, quickly. Let's go. Okay, so what do we do here? Now, what I want you to get used to, now, now that you've done it once, and I've looked, I was really good. I tell you, I was, I mean, seriously, that's, that's the best it's been all day. That was amazing. So, uh, I want you to get used to a couple things, and I want you to really, for at least for a while, I want you to follow this exact process until you get used to it. Do you see why we leave a space there? Because really, you know, this, this one isn't even, that's not part of the problem, is it? This is where the problem starts. We add the 15 to this side. This was just to remind us what the form should look like, right? But then think what we're going to do. We know that we're going to add the same thing to both sides to get this. I would start with the red box always. So you know that even before you put that number in there, you know that your goal is to create a factor x plus something squared, right, on this side. So write all this stuff out before you fill in the blanks. And then here's the chain of, of how we reason this. What's that number? Six, because it's half of B, isn't it? B is 12. So that becomes a six. Well, it starts a chain reaction then. If that's a six, in order to get that, what number did we have to have in there? Six squared. Six squared, right? We had to have 36, which means that because this is an equation, I got to put it, add it to both sides, right? And so then that just tells us that all that stuff is 51, right? And once we get to there, once we get to there, now it's easy. Let's do the two steps to isolate x. Just, just to remind us how it's done. So first thing we do is what? Square root. So we square root both sides. If I square root both sides, what do I have to include? Plus or minus. Plus or minus, right? I'm going to leave some space. When you put plus or minus on Moodle, it counts as wrong. So you have to yes. space yes. it out. You're right, you do. And we'll do that. We'll, we'll finish okay. it up that way. So we get square root of 51, and then there's only one thing left to do. What is it? Gage, what is it? Subtract 6. Now, subtracting 6 is the same thing as adding negative 6, right? Yeah. Everybody agree? Yeah. So instead of subtracting 6, because when you subtract 6, what people always think about is putting it at the end. Let's add negative 6. So we can put it in front of the plus or minus. Right? And then those cancel, and I get x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 51. I'm changing all of the Moodle problems retroactively, so it'll give you 75% credit if you don't simplify the radical. You'll still get most of the credit. But I want you to. For full credit, you've got to simplify it. This one doesn't simplify, though, does it? No. Okay? Yes? So that's the answer to simplify. That is the simplified answer. So in Moodle, Moodle wants, if there are multiple solutions, it wants them separated by a comma, right? So in Moodle, we'd have to write this as negative 6 plus radical 51, comma, negative 6 minus radical 51. Oh. Okay? You got it? Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. That's good. Yeah. That, you guys, that was awesome. You guys learned a lot today. That was good stuff. Okay, here's your reward. I got something good for you here. Riddle, riddle, riddle. I got something better. I, got, I showed this to my physics class today. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll pass. Yeah, what, what would you pass this out for me, please? <laughs>